fourth pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select. What is going on, guys? Ben Lin here coming back at you with another video. And today, coming back at you with another rebuild. Today, we are doing the Pittsburgh Steelers top players, and this is the fantasy style, so pretty much anything goes, but we top three players, Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell, David DeCastro, obviously we're going to have to check out the Big Ben Roethlisberger situation as he is getting older, talked about retiring last year, and now obviously with this season coming to an end, he could definitely retire, could have one more year left in the tank, I'm not really sure what's going on with Big Ben, he is certainly getting up there in age as he was drafted back in 2004, so it has been quite a while, Steelers could use a new quarterback, we're going to see what we can do with this team, whether it be who we trade away, who we draft. This will be a Super Bowl team, and it's one of the better teams I think we've dealt with so far this season, but it should be a good one. All right, so this is the team we're rocking with, and of course, in the fantasy style, we can do anything we want, um, whether it be trading older players to acquire draft picks or younger players or, or uh, star players to help out the team. That'll be the case. Martavis Bryant is almost certainly getting traded. I know he's a fantastic player, but he most likely won't be on the Steelers. And not that this is a realistic rebuild. We'll realistically rebuild the Steelers at some point later on in the year. But, I mean, even as sick as Martavis Bryant is, I don't think he's going to be on the Steelers um, next year. He's just been too disenfranchised with the franchise of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I just don't see him being on the team. Uh, maybe we hold on to him. Like, he is sick in the game as normal development instead of slow, which is fantastic. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But Big Ben most likely will be traded. I feel like he has to. He's 35 years old. He isn't the future of the Steelers. We have to move on from him. He's only going to get worse, and he already is down to an 88 overall. Uh, Josh Dobbs, I guess, is going to be the new starting quarterback. At tight end, we'll either trade Jesse James, the outlaw, or Vance McDonald. Most likely uh, Vance McDonald. Offensive line, Marcus Gilbert's 31, I think. He's 29, actually. Um, I thought he was 30 or 31. He's solid. Quick development as well. We might have to trade him because he's going to start regressing. Uh, but he is a solid right tackle for now. David DeCastro, obviously one of the best right guards in the NFL. Um, what do we do with Marquise Pouncey, man? Quick development, 28. Can't run block very well. We'll, we'll decide. Ramon Foster will get traded if we can. And Alejandro Villanueva. Uh, we'll probably hold on to um, for now unless we can find a good trade partner. No way I'm trading Antonio Brown. No way I'm trading Le'Veon Bell, even though he might not be on the team next year either. Defensively, uh, TJ Watt is a beast. Ryan Shazier, I mean, hope he gets back on the field. Love Ryan Shazier. So fun to watch him play. Alvin Bud Dupree can get traded, I guess. I mean, he's just not really developing all that well in the game. He does have quick development at only 24, but you'd like him to be near 80 overall. We'll hold on to him for now. Mike Mitchell, we have to upgrade at safety. Robert Golden doesn't work. Uh, and then Joe Hayden has to get traded. I used to love Joe Hayden on the Browns, but he is only going to regress at 28 years old. Already not very fast. Can't cover very well anymore. So we got to move on. Artie Burns, hopefully he can ball out. Mike Hilton has been playing really well in real life. He's pretty solid. And then the D-line, I think, is really, really good. Cam Hayward, one of the most underrated players in the NFL. Javon Hargrave is solid. Stefan Tewitt is solid. And then I guess we could upgrade. It looks like a, why is this is a 4-3 system. Daniel McCullers won't play. Neither were Tyson Alawalu. Um, we want Vince Williams out there and TJ Watt and Alvin Bud Dupree going after the quarterback. All right, it says we're in an attacking 4-3 out of pit. I mean, we're going to leave it as it is and see what this does in simulation because I'm actually curious to find out. But let's go ahead and make some trades and uh, get some players on this team that can help us win. With my first trade, I'm trading Big Ben and Sean Spence for the number one overall pick from the Browns. Browns are in need of a quarterback. We have just given them one, and uh, a decent one in Big Ben Roethlisberger is a good rental player for them um, while they could potentially drop a quarterback to play underneath them. I, I assume the Browns are going to trade for a quarterback in real life, uh, maybe Alex Smith or someone like that. But we have dealt Big Ben away. Josh Dobbs actually isn't all that bad in this game as only a 22-year-old rookie at 74 overall. But um, I don't know how many trades I even want to make because I was thinking about it, and I know it is more difficult to trade for like better players in year one. So I might just hold on to Joe Hayden, take a little bit of regression, and have him be more valuable near the draft. And I'm not really sure like who else I would trade 
because other than pieces in the offensive line and Marcus Gilbert, uh, Gilbert and Marquise Pouncey, maybe even Alejandro Villanueva, uh, I don't really want to trade too many players. All right, I did uh, what I said I wasn't going to do, and that was trade Joe Hayden. Uh, well, I didn't say I wasn't going to do it, but I didn't think that I would. Marcus Gilbert, Joe Hayden for a first-round pick from the Bucks. I think that pick is going to hold a lot of value. And, I mean, I know we gave up a lot in order to get that pick, but in reality, Marcus Gilbert is never going to be higher than an 88, and Joe Hayden's never going to be higher than an 85 now with regression, how it works in this game, which I'm not a huge fan of because some players can play amazingly so, so well and get better as they get older. For example, you have Cameron Wake, who is 35, still balling out for the Dolphins. You have, uh, who's another old player? Lorenzo Alexander of the Bills, who had his best season. And I know he's not that high of an overall. He should be a little bit higher. But Lorenzo Alexander, who had his best season as like a 32 or 33-year-old last year or two years ago. So it's like, I don't know. I feel like regression at 28 and 29 starting, it's kind of dumb the way they do it for so much. But I, I don't know. That's just me, I guess. I think they should change it. Are making a very, very strange trade that I'm sure is going to annoy fellas, uh, but, you know, whatever. Alejandro Villanueva, Ramon Foster, and Marquise Pouncey for Trevor Williams and a fourth round pick. Alejandro Villanueva, Ramon, or she's not, yeah, Ramon Foster, almost thought Ruben, uh, the linebacker for the 49ers, almost just got tongue-tied real quick. Uh, and Marquise Pouncey, they are all 28 and up, with Ramon Foster being 31, so regression will start hitting them. And why not trade for a position of need? And a very solid one at that. It, you know, cornerback Trevor Williams of the Chargers having an insane season. Uh, I think in just his second year, he is about 24 years old. He already becomes our best cornerback. 23, yeah, in his second season. Looks very, very solid. Should come in. Immediate awesome replacement for Joe Hayden. Much younger, much higher potential. Already higher overall. So that's fantastic. I would like to trade Mike Mitchell. But we're going to draft offensive linemen anyway. B.J. Finney's going to have time to play. Um, he can be pretty good. Just got to boost up his run block. I don't really know how much uh, I plan on him being the future unless he has a sixth season. He probably won't even be on the team next year. But if I could trade Vance McDonald and Mike Mitchell for a mid-round pick or a solid starter somehow, that would be fantastic. All right, really interesting trade here. I'm really playing for the future um, with these two pickups from the Oakland Raiders. Mike Mitchell, Tyson Alualu, and a third-round pick for Gary and Conley and Obi Melifonwu. Obi's going to start at strong safety more than likely because, I mean, Robert Golden is the alternative. And I forgot the Steelers had J.J. Wilcox. He is real bad. 59 zone coverage. He's down to a 69 overall. Jeez, dude. Um, and then William Gay doesn't have to play. I forgot. Mm. Gary and Conley was kind of weird, but I might start him at free safety. Or maybe Mike Hilton, because his man's very good. Can Mike Hilton... I know he's well-rounded too, but... 78 zone. He could start at free safety. And even Obi uh, could be a decent man corner. Not man corner, but... Uh, he has decent man coverage, what I'm saying. 64 and 69. He's not a great zone safety. He's not even a great coverage safety. That's not what we need him to do. I think we might give Gary and Conley a shot to play free safety... Just to get him involved. What's his overall at free safety? Um, he never played free safety at Ohio State or anything like that. He was always a corner. Sometimes went into the nickel. He's a 74 overall free safety. We're going we're gonna to work with it. We'll see how he plays. And then... What else would I want to try? I think we're pretty much fine. I think we're pretty much good. I mean, this is not a team that I... Oh, and Vance McDonald was the last thing. This is not a team that I think is going to do really well in the first season. That's fine. We have Le'Veon Bell. He's going to carry. Uh, we're pretty much playing for the draft pick so we can build up this team. Because even if it might have been a Super Bowl contender and it wouldn't have been in the game, I can guarantee you, even if it might be in real life, it won't be next year in terms of how the game works. So we needed to de-build before we rebuild. And let me trade Vance McDonald, see what I can get for him. All right, now with my last trade, I actually am trading BJ Finney. So every piece of the offensive line, uh, apart from David DeCastro, is essentially off this team. Vance McDonald, B.J. Finney, and a future two for a one and a two from the Denver Broncos. Right now, we're essentially going to go into free agency and just get in what we need. So we need a cross the board. And Ladarius Green, former um, Steeler, he could work in pretty nicely. He's a high overall. I never go out and sign him. Um, I'm not really sure why. I still don't really feel like it. 
Left tackle, we will bring in Matthew McCants. I'll take the age over uh, Brandon Albert. We'll take Mackenzie Bernardo at left guard. We traded away Marquise Pouncey, so we need a center. Um, John Urschel couldn't. I mean, he could be a fine option. Patrick Lewis as well. Patrick Lewis, I think, is actually pretty good in this game. Uh, yeah, he's pretty solid. Go ahead and sign Patrick Lewis. And then at right tackle, we'll get... Uh, let's go Sebastian Vollmer over Ja Reed. Actually, let's go Michael Orr for the blind side jokes. There we go, Michael Orr. So that is going to be the team for season number one. I know it looks really bad. That was kind of the goal. We didn't even address Roosevelt Knicks. He should be higher overall than a 59. He should be. I mean, that's just awful stats for the most part. But I think we're in a good spot. We have a ton of picks. We have a ton of cap room. And uh, hopefully the players come in, make the plays that we needed them to make or need them to make. But I will see you guys at the midseason mark for re-signings and things of that nature. So the midseason mark has arrived. Le'Veon Bell is our top priority free agent. There's no way I'm letting Le'Veon Bell go into free agency. Chris Boswell is someone that I also like to bring back. And Mike Hilton as well. Jordan Berry, maybe the rest I'm probably out on, at least for right now. Um, I do love to draft defensive linemen, so I probably won't. So Le'Veon Bell asking for kind of a lot. I mean, I'm going to re-sign him anyway. But let's bring back probably these four. Jordan Berry I'm a little bit uh, hesitant about, but I think probably all these four. So Mike Hilton and Le'Veon Bell are both back, but Chris Boswell and Jordan Berry both want an improvement on their salary. That's fine. Uh, we can do that at the end of the season. But uh, speaking of the end of the season, I will probably see you guys there. All right, so we missed out on the playoffs. I didn't even show the record. Uh, but we finished 8-8, eight eight, which is better than I wanted us to finish. As uh, Josh Dobbs threw for 4,500 yards, 31 touchdowns, and only 12 interceptions. Have a season, Josh Dobbs. Rushing, Le'Veon Bell, 1,500 yards, 13 touchdowns. He's a beast. I mean, there's not much else to say. James Conner, good for him, man. 10 touchdowns, I love it. Receiving, Antonio Brown, unfair. 1,500 yards on nearly 100 catches. 12 touchdowns. Jesse James, the outlaw, also had 8 touchdowns. Juju with uh, about 900 yards, 5 touchdowns, about 900 yards for Martavis Bryant. Marty B, almost 80 catches. Blocking, offensive line, uh, specialized in letting Josh Dobbs get hit. Shazier, 135 tackles, tackles for loss. Uh, we have 10 from Javon Hargrave and Cam Hayward, which led the team. QB sacks, 14 from Stefan Tewitt. 12 for Cameron Hayward. Interceptions, 4 for Shazier, 4 for Trevor Williams, 2 for Hilton, 1 for Artie Burns and Obi Melifonwu. Force fumbles, we have 2 from a number of players, only 2, Bud Dupree and Stefan Tewitt. Um, fumble recoveries, only 4 in total for the whole team. And the defensive touchdowns, nobody got into the end zone. Yearly awards, Tom Brady wins MVP. Josh Dobbs at number 7. That's wild. AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Tom Brady. Josh Dobbs at three, Le'Veon Bell at four. Defensive player of the year, CJ Mosley, Ryan Shazier at number three. Offensive rookie of the year, it is Joshua Dobbs. Josh Dobbs is, might be our starting quarterback forever. As James Conner finishes eight, Juju at number nine. Defensive rookie of the year, of course, it's Miles Garrett. Obi? Obi Melifon who finishes at two. Oh, that would have been sick to win. Mike Hilton at seven, TJ Watt at 10. Man, how did Obi finish so well? Josh Dobbs has nearly 50K, and he has quick development now for winning Offensive Rookie of the Year. That is what I like to see. Defensively, OB has about 9K. Did he make the Pro Bowl or something? Uh, no? Yeah, not a ton of XP. I'm not sure what he did stat-wise to consider finishing top two. He tackled a lot of players, not an interception. All right. I mean, that's okay, I guess. But let's go ahead and simulate to the offseason. Oh, yeah. Forgot about Chris Boswell there, guy, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Chris Boswell has got to be re-signed. Chris Boswell is going to free agency. I upped up the salary considerably, and he just didn't want it. Um, he's coming back to Pittsburgh. I, I'm telling you, he is. Actually, you know what? I'm franchise tagging him. You don't. You can't leave. We're like the uh, Hotel California. Jordan Berry is back as well. I don't know what's eating up so much of our salary because we only have about 20 mil to spend in free agency potentially. I know Le'Veon Bell is a decent uh, salary and Antonio Brown's getting paid a ton, but I can't really think of many other players that would be getting a huge salary cap hit. 
Uh, Cam Hayward, actually a decent bit. Stefan Tewitt, really. Um, so, uh, it's not that much. I mean, a bunch of these guys are going to go anyway. Like, Bernadeau, we're not going to be paying 4 mil. JJ Wilcox. Ah, oh, we got we, we to rework some of these uh, contracts and stuff. Not re Well, we can't really rework them, but we have to get rid of JK, JJ Wilcox and some of these players that don't matter at all. So, in free agency, I don't really have an interest in any of these guys. Really at all. No one particularly helps us too much, so I just don't really feel like dealing with it. Oh, Chris Boswell. Forgot. Okay, need Chris Boswell. Oh, never mind. Franchise tag him, and I'm just stupid. All right, cool. I'm going to scout and see you guys for the NFL draft. NFL draft time. Hopefully the Browns sucked. And oh, baby. We have the top two picks in the draft. Solid. The Titans are trading a 1, a 2, and a 3 for the number 1, or excuse me, number 2 overall pick. I still have the number 1 overall pick. And guess who's interested? Tennessee Titans, you guessed it. Unless, I think the Titans traded, do they always, I thought they had the 3rd. Or, the Bears have the 2nd now somehow. Did the Titans trade it to the Bears? Did I trade with the Bears by mistake? I guess I did. I'm not even that mad about that. Uh, I also decided I want the, that pick back, so I'm going to get it. A one, a future one, and a future two for the number one overall pick. They can have it. Um, they get the number one overall pick. We're going to move back slightly. So we have the second and fourth now. Bears can take whomever. And we are going to trade away this pick, depending on what the offers are. Browns offering a, are offering a one, a two, and a future one. I'm going to go ahead and accept that from the Browns. And then uh, simulate to pick number four. And then we have pick number eight. And um, like 16 or something like that. And the player that I want is going to be Griffin Heaney out of Alabama. Prototype middle linebacker. I didn't even see he said type prototype. But 6'2", 252 with good speed. Very agile. Very strong. Here he is, Griffin Heaney. 78 overall superstar development. Nothing more I can ask for. He's ranked number 18. We draft him at 4. I don't care. 86 speed, 87 tackle, 84 block shed with 93 hit power. Are you kidding me? What's your zone? 73 zone coverage coming out? Oh my goodness. Superstar development as well. Like, I could not ask for anything more with that pick. What a beast to go alongside Ryan Shazier. The Patriots are offering me their first round pick this year and a second next year just for trading down. So I'm trading down. Um down a lot but i'm getting a second rounder next year which should be pretty valuable and now we might as well take this pick at number 16 depending who's on the board sherman bibbs out of ohio state incredible speed 424 40 yard dash that's as fast as it gets um and i guess i actually john ross ran 422 but yeah this is pretty much as fast as it gets sherman bibbs out of ohio state slow development unlike his speed which is a 97 um, he's pretty good, other than being ranked 47 in the class. Awareness is low, release is low, that's why. But route running solid, spectacular catch is solid for 97 speed, amazing acceleration. Catching traffic is high, catching is decently high. It's just awareness and release. Pretty elusive. He'll be a decent kick returner, which I guess I probably shouldn't have spent a first round pick when we already have wide receivers. But if he was a beast, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm not done taking receivers, I'm not sure. Last receiver I'm probably ever going to need to draft, and that's Andrew Francois out of Clemson. 22 years old, 4 40-yard dash. Great top three skills. He's 6'6". Six six. I could play him a tight end, maybe. Here he is. 76 overall, normal development. 91 speed, 80 route running, 87 catching, 89 acceleration. Uh, 83 catch and traffic, 91 spectacular catch, 90 jumping. 80 release is good. Um, I wish I could see his run block, because that would matter a lot. He's solid, except for that he drops passes. Uh, hmm. We could play him at tight end. He, that might be the look, honestly. Hybrid, like, tight end, uh, joker style player. That'd be really good. I don't know what I want to do with him just yet. With this pick now in the second round going, Gilbert Branch out of USC. Decent top three skills. He's a zone style player. So even though zone isn't in his top three skills, I can guess that it's probably pretty good. Very fast, ran a 4-4-2, 40-yard dash. Very strong. Here he is, 78 overall, ranked number 22 in the class. We took him at 28. 
but really all I care about is high speed, high hit power, and zone coverage can get boosted up from that 69 rating. He'll likely play free safety when we'll move Gary and Conley back into uh, cornerback. So, eh, not a bad pick at all. I'm happy with it. We have a bunch of picks at the top of round two here. I'm probably just going to turn them into first rounders next year. Let's go Cincinnati. Also picking up a seventh. It doesn't really matter. Um, we are going to go with this trade away. Trade down. First rounder from the Colts next year. Getting a five this year. We have a lot of picks, but I think picks are a really good way to build. And uh, in Madden, when I can just get like a ton of picks, we're usually in a pretty good spot. Let's go with the Ravens, who hopefully should be without Joe Flacco. And uh, I think that's pretty much it for the top of the second round trade downs. Our first pick is going to be Jai Frazier out of Temple. Very strong, decent top three skills. Our first pick in the second round, I should say. Here he is. 78 overall, quick development, rank number 32 in the class. We took him at 48. 91 strength is excellent. 82 run block, 76 pass block, 85 impact blocking, 76 acceleration, and quick development is awesome. Really good player to add to the offensive line. We're going to be taking another offensive lineman here in Barry McBride, a left tackle out of Wisconsin. Decent top three skills. Decently strong as well. I wish he had more reps uh, of 225 at the Combine. But it is what it is. 77 overall, ranked number 23 in the class. We took him at 80. 87 strength is more than usable. 76 run block, 85 pass block, 88 impact block with 80 acceleration, 74 speed. Very, very fast. Might work better as a guard at left guard. Uh, but, I mean, right now I guess he's probably our franchise left tackle. We could use a solid backup quarterback. And why would we not go Torrey and Lawrence? Now, does he look good? Not even remotely, other than a throw power. But he said, Roger Goodell, shove it up your ass. Skip the combine. We're taking him. He's a baller. 72 overall, slow development. You'd figure. Uh, he's actually not that bad, though. Decent backup. It's slow development. You know, anyone who says, screw the combine, um, probably isn't the best in terms of developing. But we like what we got there. Now, we have a lot of mid-round picks, as you can see on the left of your screen. I'm just going to start taking players on my draft board. This is one that I am particularly excited about. Seth Nash out of Arizona. Very fast. Well, not very fast, but decently fast for an offensive lineman. Very strong. Very agile. Amazing top three skills. Here he is. 77 overall, quick development. Ranked number 42 in the class. We take him at 112. But look how good he is. 88 strength. Extremely good for a center. 83 run block. Awesome. 83 pass block. Awesome. 88 impact block. Awesome. High acceleration at a 78. Decent speed at a 69. Quick development. Killer player there. Super, super excited to draft him. He was supposed to go in the sixth round. We took him here in the fourth, and I'm not thinking twice about it. All right. More players that we're kind of reaching down the board. This is still the fourth round. We're taking him, uh, a player that's supposed to go in the early sixth. Looks very solid. Awesome top three skills. Insanely strong. Could move him inside. Keep him at 3-4 defensive end, even though we don't have a real need for it. Looks super solid. Couldn't pass him up. Ranked number 107 in the class. We took him at 121. 92 strength, 87 tackle, 81 block shed. 77 power moves is good. Um, decent acceleration at an 80, 84 hit power. Just play rec and awareness are really low. But he's not a bad player. Not at all. Next up, I'm actually taking another receiver. Uh, just because he looks like decent value here. So might as well take him. We don't necessarily need him. He's an excellent pick, or good pick, I guess. Rank number 131, we took him at 137. 92 speed. He has all good stats, just route running, awareness, and release are pretty low. But, you know, other than that, solid player. And uh, I'm not really sure where we're going to use him, if at all. We have just so many picks. We might as well just take decent players to fill roles. All right, traded down that pick uh, in the fifth for a third, actually. We have three picks remaining. I have two players left on my draft board. It's a running back and it's a wide receiver I know nothing about. And I know I've already drafted three receivers in a position where we don't necessarily need receivers. But he looks decent. B-plus catching is pretty much all I know. But he's really, really fast at 6'2", uh, with a decent vertical. Good broad, good 20-yard shuttle, good three cone. He's kind of strong. He looks really good. But we also have this running back. Just fast. Good depth guy. Um, he's fast. That's all I can say, really. He's not anything special. But that wide receiver, I'm actually decently excited about. Provided he's still on the board, I'm definitely going to take him. Ah, he got drafted. That's annoying. I would have preferred him over the running back. He went to the Chiefs at number 191. Just going to simulate to the end of the draft. I do want to see how good he is. 
Maybe I dodged a bullet. Ah, nice. He actually is an 80 overall. <laughs> yeah, I have mild autism. Whatever. Yeah, Tyrell Saunders is uh, unbelievable. Especially with his overall. He's very fast. Uh, really pissed I missed out on him, actually. If, if I can uh, be honest with you. I'm really, really upset. So Andrew Francois, we've moved to tight end where he's an 86 overall. Run block was only a 59. So it is kind of low, but also that's like what Evan Ingram's run block is. So I'm fine to keep him at tight end or move him to tight end. He's already really, really solid. We have wide receivers. We drafted one. I really would have liked Tyrell Saunders. I actually might trade for him, dude. Because he's a six-round pick. He probably doesn't have all that much value. Well, I mean, he's, he's still very good at the Chiefs, but... I really want him. I'm getting Tyrell Saunders. I'm not... I know I didn't draft him, but he's playing on my team. All right. Trade for... Uh, not Torian Saunders. Tyrell Saunders. We're trading Torian Lawrence a 1 and a 2 in order to get Tyrell Saunders. It's really a pride thing. I have so many picks that it doesn't really matter at this point. Um, we played that well. I needed Tyrell Saunders on the team, and now I can probably trade Marty B for a backup quarterback if I need one. He is solid. I mean, I want Juju out there. We have a really good receiving core, but I needed Tyrell Saunders. He has normal development, but again, I needed him on the team. It was a pride thing, which I'm fine with giving up picks for pride. He's a beast. All right, so this is the fully upgraded team. We'll start on the offense side of the ball. Josh Dobbs actually up to an 81 overall. Looks decent. Got to get that awareness up, but he's 84 speed. I mean, he's he's a pretty ideal guy to start at, uh, at QB. He's got some weapons around him now. Tyrell Saunders is going to be at wide receiver number four, so he'll get some action as we're starting our rookie Gilbert Branch at free safety, not strong. OB is going to stay at strong safety as Gary and Kindly was moved to cornerback number four. Defensive line, Hitchens, I know it looks like he's starting. He's not. Um, we are in a 3-4 system, so Griffin Heaney is going to start, um, and hopefully he has a sick rookie season enough to win defensive rookie of the year. A lot of potential with this roster. Let's go ahead and simulate to the midseason mark. See how we're all doing. I'm going to use some Coach XP before I forget. I, I mean, I just did kind of forget. Four and three at the midseason mark. Currently atop the AFC North. We just crushed the Saints. Um, Ryan Shazier is our top priority free agent. Going to want to bring him back as well as Trevor Williams. Jesse, there's no need for Jesse James. Probably want Marty B back, but maybe not. Probably want Bud Dupree back, but maybe not. I want Chris Boswell back. I'm not sure. Chris Boswell's back. Uh, Trevor Williams, Ryan Chaseyer's back. Bud Dupree wants a higher salary, but I, I don't really know what my future plans are for him. And I didn't offer on Martavis Bryant for the sheer reason that if you look at our team currently, we have solid receiving options behind Martavis Bryant. So we do, do we really need five solid ones, or can we just get around with four and then like an okay fifth? in um, this Jimmy Melton fellow who really isn't bad. Just got to boost route running and awareness on him. So I maybe missed my window on trading Martavis Bryant. I might like tag and trade with a franchise tag and trade, but I'm not really 100% sure on that. I'm just going to simulate to the playoffs. I think we can make it there. And, you know, once upgrading, I think we can boost them up um, to the point of where this can be a Super Bowl caliber team. We actually made the playoffs at 8-8. Eight and eight. Which won the division in the AFC North. That's sad. We'll check out the stats, see how exactly that may have happened. Not a fantastic team season as Josh Dobbs has very, very similar numbers to what he had last year. We're actually going to compare that to what he did last year. Uh, <laughs> about 39 fewer yards, exactly. Um, worse passer rating slightly. One more touchdown. Same interceptions. About the same long. Was sacked even more times. That's interesting. With a better offensive line. Pretty much identical stats. Le'Veon Bell, 1,200 yards. 16 touchdowns. Didn't fumble, though. Rece whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Josh Dobbs took off a lot. Fumbled five times. Might have to boost carrying. Receiving AB, six season, 10 touchdowns as well. Uh, Juju almost had 1,000 yards. Seven touchdowns for him. Francois, six TDs. Let's see. Decent blocking. Defensively, Ryan Shazier led us in tackles with 148. Heaney had 101. Tackles for loss, 20 run, or 21 from Tuit, 12 from Hayward. Sacks, 12 from Hayward, 9.5 for Tuit. Interceptions, we have 
Wow, very few. Very few overall. That's interesting. Force fumbles, two from a number of different players. As far as recoveries go, Shazier, Hargrave both had two. And then defensive touchdowns, nobody had any. We got to boost this defense. I might change systems as A-Rod wins MVP. No Steelers in there. AFC Offensive Player of the Year. Josh Dodds in there at number 10. No Le'Veon Bell. Defensive Player of the Year is Paul Pazlozny. Shazier at four. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Savina Bernardo. Andrew Francois, our tight end, comes in at three. Tyrell Saunders at six. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to the cornerback, Crosby Berry. Griffin Heaney at number four. Gilbert Branch is safety at number seven. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use this XP on this team. Hopefully, we can uh, make everyone pretty sick and then do well in the playoffs. I'm not sure. I think our defense is the one main thing letting us down, and the O-line just got to develop a bit more. But we're not in a bad spot. All right, upgraded team is as such. Defensively, we're in a good spot. But uh, let's see if we can go ahead and beat the Texans in the wild card to advance to the divisional. And we do, actually. What's our XP situation looking like? Nothing crazy. We play the Jags here in the divisional. We're not going to buy. Actually, I'll upgrade Josh Dobbs. Why not? All right, Josh Dobbs up to an 85 with confidence. Can we beat the Jags to advance the conference championship? That's actually interesting because that's the playoff matchup this weekend. I don't know if you, get, what, you guys are seeing this, but that's actually the matchup. Steelers-Jags. Jags came out on top. Interesting. Very interesting. Upsetting for me now because of this franchise, but I'll see you guys in the offseason. All right, just re-signed Bud Dupree. Don't want Jesse James. I think we're going to move on from Martavis Bryant. We have other guys that, uh, that, are, that are solid that can play behind him. Could also potentially sign or draft some more because we have a lot of picks. But uh, we are in a good spot. Time for free agency. We have a ton more cap room now. I'm not sure if anyone interesting is going to be here. Tevin Coleman could be a very good backup. Actually, we're going to get Tevin Coleman. Also offering a pretty big deal to Taylor Lewan. Um, he could be our franchise tackle. Jason Verrett's here. I don't really want Jason Verrett too much, but he's a solid player. Um, but if we could get Taylor Lewan at right tackle or move McBride over to right tackle, have Taylor Lewan be our franchise left, we could still get better. At outside linebacker, I mean, Bud Dupree really isn't all that good in the game. He's more of an athlete than an actual good, sound outside linebacker. We could upgrade at defensive line, um, at defensive tackle, potentially. Javon Hargrave is solid, but he could be a backup. Uh, and then cornerback, I mean, we need help. We need help. Strong safety, too. I'm not sure how I feel about Obi. Taylor Lewan and Tevin Coleman both accepted. Great split back setup now. That's going to be awesome. And, um, of course, now the offensive line's much better with the addition of Taylor. 77 run block? What do you do? I don't know what that's about. We're going to move um, this fellow here. Barry McBride over to right tackle. Again, we have a 1, a 2, 7. I mean, we have a lot of first-round picks. I'm going to get players instead. <laughs> like, I'm going to trade for some sick players. All right. Big moves being made. People... Just want me to trade for Marshawn Lattimore more, which I'm fine with doing, as I love Marshawn Lattimore. He's also insane. We are trading in Bud Dupree, unfortunately. The Saints have the top two picks in the draft now. Um, and uh, they didn't take it on a cornerback, even though maybe they need a cornerback now. But Marshawn Lattimore going to help out the team considerably. I still do need more cornerback help, honestly. Like We have some solid ones. I need some better ones. Need a better outside linebacker. Need a better strong safety. This pick, though, I'm taking Ellis Neal to play outside linebacker, maybe. Uh, slow development kind of sucks, but he's very good. Just doesn't maybe fit our scheme. I'm not sure if I want to change schemes yet, in which case I would need another defensive tackle, and then I could trade or move positions for TJ Watt, and then I could move uh, Stefan Tewitt inside the defensive tackle, in which case I would probably, I, I guess maybe not need an edge. Uh, and then me, I don't even, I'm not sure. I feel like I'm just in the need... For a safety at this point. With this trade, trading a 1 and a 2 for John Johnson from the Rams. Good young safety. Very solid player. And uh, he's going to help out at safety. I'll play him at strong safety. Probably move. Um, I guess we, he already plays free safety. We might be fine. 
I'm just going to simulate to the end of the draft. I don't really care to make any more picks. I had so many. We turned them into solid players. We're in a good spot. This is the team for season number three. It looks pretty solid overall. Our wide receivers need to progress alongside AB. Running back, we're fine. Josh Dobbs needs to continue to get better, but I think we're in a really good spot with him. Offensive line, solid. They need to continue to progress. And then defensively, uh, I think we're in a really, really good spot. You got to consider Hitchens doesn't start. Haney does. We're in a really solid position. And of course, with the addition of Marshawn Lattimore. I know I just rhymed there. I'm kind of a rapper. I don't know if you guys knew. And then John Johnson, very creative name. If your last name is Johnson, I mean, you pretty much have to name uh, your child John or Johnson. Both would work. But we're going to go to the midseason mark and uh, hopefully smash the competition, get some XP. And uh, yeah. We are 7 and 0 oh at the midseason mark, just to showcase that I didn't cheat, obviously. I mean, I, I feel the need to do this. I'm not sure why. Most long term viewers know I don't force wins because I don't really care at all. Um, and of course, the only time where it doesn't say none for force win is when it says home, which is the bye week. So if we could finish undefeated here in season number three, that'd be solid. Javon Hargrave is our top free agent. Artie Burns. Only two I'd want to bring back. And Artie Burns isn't even all that good in the game, unfortunately. Artie Burns, Javon Hargrave are both back. We're in a good spot. I don't think we're going to finish undefeated. I think it's going to be 12-4, and 13-3. It's kind of luck of the draw, but obviously hoping for undefeated so we can get eliminated round one because that's the way Madden works. First round bye, we finished 13-3, yeah. Um, it's the way she goes sometimes. It's just the way she goes. Josh Dobbs. 4,729 yards, 32 touchdowns, 16 interceptions. Pretty much what we can expect from him from now on. Uh, Le'Veon Bell, insane season, 1,500 yards, 25 touchdowns. Did not fumble once on 325 carries. Receiving AB, 87 catches for 1,300 yards, 7 touchdowns. Juju, almost 900 yards. And Tyrell Sanders, Saunders, 1,100 yards, 8 touchdowns. We're in a good spot there. Keep saying that. Offensive line, kind of whatever. It's can't really. The offensive line doesn't matter in sim. It's kind of weird. Tackles, Ryan Shazier led with 132. Tackles for loss, 14 from Stefan Tuitt. Sacks, 12 and a half for Stefan Tuitt, 11 for Cam Hayward. Interceptions, four for Marshawn Lattimore, three for Shazier, Trevor Williams, and John Johnson. Force fumbles, two from a lot of players. So we have a lot of recoveries. We did actually. Safety for Tuit, and there's a touchdown as well. Two for Marshawn Lattimore and one for Trevor Williams. We got playmaking safeties. Awards. Le'Veon Bell wins MVP. Love it. Josh Dobbs at four. You'll love to see it. AFC Offense Player of the Year is also Le'Veon Bell. Dobbs at five. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Reggie Ragland. Interesting. Shazier at six. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to the Chiefs' Malcolm Davenport. Steelers, we got Noah Bianam in there. I think he's a fullback. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year... Ellis Neal, the outside linebacker, finishes at two. Uh, maybe he could have got boosted to normal development if he had won that. So that kind of sucks. Frazier made the Pro Bowl. Got a ton of XP for it. That is pretty awesome. Oh, and Bibbs, what are you doing? You make it as a returner? And he got increased to normal development. That's inspiring. Defensively, XP situation is uh, pretty low as it always. Actually, John Johnson made a Pro Bowl, I guess, his first Pro Bowl. And uh, he got 32,000 XP for that. I'm going to upgrade and uh, see you guys for the Divisional, which will be against the 12-4 Kansas City Chiefs. All right, fully upgraded team. Bunch of studs here. Bibbs is up to an 86 overall. We're going to keep him at the 4 for now. Uh, actually, you know what? Nah. He's in the slot. Saunders, yeah, whatever. Things are looking pretty sharp defensively. We're not exactly where we'd like to be, but players are getting better, which is, you know, you love to see it. Chiefs, please get out of the way. The bus is coming through. I know we don't have Jerome Bettis anymore, but they got out of the way. We are facing the New England Patriots. We're going up to Gillette with, I assume, a Patriots list. Tom Brady. Nope, that's not what it is. It's a Tom Brady-less Patriots. 
to advance to the Super Bowl. Here we go. And we do it. Steelers, Vikings, an actual potential matchup for this year's Super Bowl. Everything is on the line here. Not a whole lot of XP for anyone. Irrelevant. Josh Dobbs has some, though. Did you win Offensive Player of the Week? <laughs> he does it again, Josh Dobbs. Playing up to a 90. What a beast. Now, it's kind of annoying that I had to run with Josh Dobbs for this rebuild, but he's not going to win Offensive Rookie of the Year, and I'm getting rid of him. Like, that's just not a thing that would happen. But regardless, headed down to Miami to face the 93 overall Minnesota Vikings. We're both going pretty far from home. There isn't real one home field advantage kind of situation going on like the Vikings would have this year, hypothetically, were or if they were to make the uh, Super Bowl. But here we go. Steelers, Vikings, Super Bowl. There will be a season number four regardless of the result here. Let's go, Steelers. All right, here we go. I've changed the, the time to 15 minutes, which in hindsight isn't the best decision. It goes pretty much just as fast. It's, you know, the same correlation as if it were six minutes. Um, it's now just 15 so Vikings are up early 16 to 3 but we answer making it 16 to 10 17 16 now in the third and we are pouring it on 24 to 16 as the Vikings answer 24 all here late in the fourth they are going to score it's an overtime we're jumping in excellent camera angle excellent work here in this particular Super Bowl no players have decided to take the field and Minnesota will take a delay of game. Love this glitch. Happens all the time. Every time I jump in, in fact. All right. Actually, that probably worked out for the best. It's first and 15. We're going to have to play some solid defense on all Madden, uh, which means we probably won't be able to because this you know, default all Madden is uh, really annoying. We're just going to have to make plays. I don't really know what to tell you. Will someone cover him across the middle? All Madden's never going to fumble. They're going to win the game. That's pretty much what this is coming down to. We're going to use Raheeny because I think Shazier can do a little bit more for himself. They might just run the ball. I don't know if they can. Let's go into the flat. Take the ball away. I'm not really sure what the situation is. Like, I don't know where we jumped in. Is like, I figure we had the ball and got stopped. And, I mean, a, a field goal wins the game here. I'm not really sure why they're not kicking it. I'm not 100% sure on the situation, to be fair. But that's just my guess. Oh, he lobbed it over me. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Touchdown. That wins the game. I mean, that wasn't my zone, but I don't know where the free safety is for that. Vikings win the Super Bowl. And, uh, yeah. That kind of sucks. All right. Season number four, I think we're going to be uh, Super Bowl champions. We made the Super Bowl in year three. And uh, I tried to jump in because the incompetent offense led by Josh Dobbs could not score. And then defensively... Um, I mean, our defense was falling apart. I jumped in. They scored on us. These things will happen. We're not going to worry about it. Year four is our year. Pittsburgh Steelers will be champions in the year 2020, which I guess we're offseason 2019, so yeah, the Super Bowl will be played in the 2020, uh, the year of that. I need to stop. Any free agents I'm interested in? Not Zeke, not Deion Jones, maybe Yannick Ngakwe. Actually, I don't know if he can really play in any type of hybrid. Did he really have 67 block shed? Wow, okay. Doesn't really have any coverage ability. We would most likely be playing him at outside linebacker. 82 speed. I don't see me offering him a contract. I have to shit. All right, we're back. I don't remember where we are. Oh, we lost the Super Bowl. That's right. How could I forget? Did I check free agency? I don't think so. No, I definitely did. All right, all right. I know where we are. Everyone calm down. Season four, the fourth and final season. We'll send to the draft. I didn't do any scouting. I don't particularly care. No one that we draft would come into the team for the most part. So well, we're just going to take shots in the dark. All right, let's do it. Hook them horns. Chandler Lambert. All right. Hook em horns! Ah, uh, uh. Rank number 11, took him at 63. Slow development. Alright, Javik. Javek. I don't know. Hook em horns! <laughs> Alright. Hook em horns! 
Alright. Hug him hard! Alright. Hug him hard! Alright, I'm done with the draft. <laughs> I'm done. Alright, upgraded team for the season. We're simulating straight to the playoffs. This is a playoff caliber team. I, I, Cam Hayward's regressing. That's fine. Uh, could use an upgrade over Javon Hargrave. Yeah, he's just not very good. I might go out and do that right now. A one and Obi Melifanwu gets me Fletcher Cox. And now I can even potentially... And I didn't even need to trade that one. Now I can trade potentially a two and Javon Hargrave for a better pass rushing outside linebacker to complement TJ Watt. Um, because Ellis Neal is okay, but I mean, we could use somebody a bit better. Mike Hilton, Javon Hargrave in a two for Jadavion Clowney. Clownvis is on the team. He will be playing outside linebacker, um, right outside linebacker, that is. TJ Watt on the other side. This is a recipe for disaster for opposing offenses, let me tell you. Here we go. See you guys for the playoffs. Big money. All right, here we are. Playoff time. Tell me we, well, we made it. There we go. 14 and two, even better than last year. How did we get there? Josh Dobbs, 4,662 yards, 39 touchdowns, 15 interceptions, rushing Le'Veon Bell, 1,674 yards, 17 touchdowns, unreal season. Tevin Coleman also had 11 touchdowns as Antonio Brown grabbed 100 catches for nearly 1,500 yards, 12 TDs. Juju had almost 1,000 yards. Same with Sherman Bibbs. Blocking, offensive line. I mean, the stats are always dumb, in my opinion. As Shazier leads our team in tackles with 120. Tackles for loss to it with 12. Hayward with 11. Sacks, 11 for Clowney, 10.5 for Cam Hayward. Interceptions, 4 for Marshawn Lattimore. 3 for Shazier, Burns, Johnson, and Branch. Force fumbles, two for Shazier Burns. Fumble recoveries, two for Artie Burns. And then defensive touchdowns, one for the safety Gilbert Branch. We were first in offensive yards, and we were second in defensive yards. Let's check out the yearly awards as Todd Gurley wins MVP. Le'Veon Bell at number two, Dobbs at number four. ASU Offensive Player of the Year is Le'Veon Bell. Josh Dobbs at number four. Defensive Player of the Year, Ryan Shazier. Jenny Van Clownby at number four. Offensive Rookie of the Year, David Levine. And Delbert DeMar is the Defensive Rookie of the Year. All right, Divisional Championship. Who would we face? Ooh, familiar matchup. The Kansas City Chiefs here in the Divisional. I have some XP to spend. We're going to spend it. Again, not a ton, unfortunately, but a decent bit. Should be able to uh, upgrade our players. Josh Dobbs has a good bit. Offensive line is kind of a lot. Fully upgraded team for the player up. Uh, Wow, okay, for the playoffs, and it is a juggernaut. Very, very good team. That's what it looks like defensively. We are in a really good spot. I have high hopes that we can go ahead and win the Super Bowl. Specialists, I mean, even Chris Boswell and Jordan Berry are looking okay. The overalls of kickers and punters are really low in this year's Madden. So, um, I don't know. There's not really much you can do about that. How did Boswell get quick? Oh, Pro Bowl. All right. Playoff time. Chiefs, please lose. They do. Now the Bills in the conference championship to advance to the Super Bowl. And we lose. 38-35. to 35. Uh, We'll see how it happened. I mean, I don't even want to see a lead that was blown. But let's be honest. It probably was conference championship. We got shut out in the second half. They scored 24 unanswered points. Maybe more. We were up 21 nothing in the first quarter. Twenty-one nothing. Josh Dobbs, two picks. I don't know how. <laughs> how do you how do you lose that one? What is this? The Chiefs? That's gonna do it for the rebuild, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. This is the final team. I mean, I think it's a sick team. But uh, they couldn't go all the way. That's going to do it, though, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Shit, don't